Max, I want to start off with you. Elon says he's continuing these talks with the Saudi fund, that he's also talking to other large shareholders. Do we have any idea who those large shareholders are and just how far along these talks are? No, no, we have no ideas about anything, in fact. And, and I think there's sort of, even with the information that, that, that came out this morning uh, from Elon Musk's blog post, uh, you know, there's sort of a wide range of possibilities that, that could have happened. I mean, we know that there was some kind of concrete uh, conversation between um, the, the Saudis and Elon Musk, I, I believe, on July 31st. I mean, that, that, and that timing is that's pretty tight for, for a buyout. Um, we don't know if they talked about price. Uh, so, so, we, so, you know, the, the blog post says, you know, there's going to be some due diligence needed and some various vague things that would need to happen. We don't know if they've actually come to any kind of agreement. Um, in terms of large shareholders, we're going to be talking about sort of the big um, mutual funds, you know, Fidelity, Vanguard. Guard um, and so on that 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 own big chunks of um, Tesla stock. Colin, so a lot of questions here. As uh, Max mentioned, possibilities, large mutual funds, etc. But what are the other possibilities here? Is there a scenario where Elon Musk brings in some of his other billionaire tech friends in Silicon Valley to help invest? And the truth of the matter is, we we really don't know. As Max mentioned, you know, we don't know what a structure would look like. Um, you know what, uh, you know what the number of shares would be that that people would need to to buy to actually take this company private. What you know, sort of dividend there might be, if any. Um, you know, what sort of liquidity profile? There's just an extraordinarily limited amount of information at this point to make any sort of assessment on what's happening here. And now, Colin, he also snuck in in his blog post that he considers himself a potential bidder. Doesn't that bring in a host of legal issues, given that he is the CEO and chairman of the company? Uh, absolutely. You have to go through a legal process to, to provide a tender for a company in, in this regard. And, um, you know, it sounds like uh, from the flurry of tweets and blog posts that this is all happening on the fly. And, and in some uh, regard in response to the, the legal backlash that, that they're seeing, um, given the fact that it sounds like the tweets maybe were a little bit ahead of the process. So, Max, there are these continuing discussions with the Saudis, but doesn't this bring it to question the Committee on Foreign Investments here? I'm sure they would take issue with a large foreign investor taking a stake in this iconic American company. Yeah, I mean, and I think especially in the Trump era where we've seen the, you know, the, the administration sort of willing to kind of um, do new things uh, to, to protect, uh, as they see it, you know, American national security. I think that's certainly an issue. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the American relationship with Saudi Arabia is not, you know, nearly as contentious as the relationship with China, where we've seen, you know, uh, the Trump administration really, you know, take action in, in some uh, dramatic ways. Um, the other thing that's that's sort of interesting about this, uh, a colleague, uh, Liam Denning, wrote a really interesting column earlier today about how by doing this, Musk has kind of given a, quite a lot of leverage to the Saudis, because now, you know, he's already sort of said funding secure, you know, uh, w this is just going to happen. If, if they were if they were able to sort of put out something that would put a little cold water on this, that, that seems like it would throw this whole process into kind of chaos. So it's sort of a perplexing chain of events, to be honest. Yeah, and Colin, on that note, I want to get your take on a question that our Tesla reporter posed in a piece today. She said, is Elon Musk in the midst of pulling off the go-to private deal of the century, or is he making the best of a weak hand in high-stakes poker? I mean, I, I can't really say which which way this is going to play out at this point. Like I said earlier, um, we're still waiting on a great deal of information, you know, and, and, you know, the company still has to perform. And so even if they do go private at, at $420, that may be, um, you know, and, and some, you know, some people are arguing that that may be a, a way to, to cover up some of the, the concerns around hitting profitability in the public markets and not being able to reach those metrics. You know, we obviously upgraded the stock a couple of weeks ago based on the potential for operating cash flow from the Model 3 if they're able to hit this 15% gross margin. But really, we're still, you know, only a month into the quarter, a little bit more than that. And there's a lot of, uh, lot of room to run here uh, and, a, and a lot of unanswered questions. Right, Max. Bears would argue that Musk here is really the master of distraction. He's trying to get investors to look away from some of the financial issues, the production problems. What's your take on that? 
I mean, you know, I think Tesla, by any kind of objective standard, has had a, a pretty good couple of months. I mean, you know, there were people who thought, you know, it would be very hard for them to hit the, the, the 5,000 cars per week number uh, for the Model 3, and now they seem to be hitting it comfortably. If you look at the, uh, the Bloomberg uh, uh, production model, you know, it's, it's above 5,000 right now. So I think that's a, that's a good sign. I mean, the, that said, you know, all of these issues that people have been worried about with Tesla are still there. And I think that if, if your core concern is, you know, this, this is a company that doesn't totally have his stuff together, I'm not sure you're encouraged by, you know, the events of the last few days. That said, you know, if you're a believer, if you, if you see this as a, as a big growth opportunity, then, you know, going private sounds good. And it's, it's kind of the same story we've been hearing um, from Tesla for months and months, which is that, you know, within a certain sort of vision and version of the facts, it looks, it looks great. And in another version, if you, if you don't quite believe everything Elon Musk says, it looks, you know, like a disaster waiting to happen.